I've seen mm -hmm. more Bitcoiners getting libertarianized yeah. than, unfortunately, I've seen libertarians yeah. getting Bitcoinized. And I've been to, mm -hmm. you know, various groups and conferences. So for me, this is a direct proof. Awesome. That, that no other activities we did, I don't know, some TV streams of some elections or, or some conference when we tried to debate socialists, they did not bring such a rate of conversion as just getting interested in Bitcoin brings. Ladies and gentlemen around the world, welcome to another episode of BitGuide. We have today Tomek on. We met at um, the Bitcoin conference in Prague. And as you Hi, might hello, know, everybody. I live in Poland and it was very refreshing and a great surprise to learn that uh, Tomek and his friends at the booth that I visited, all come from Poland and are active in Poland. I haven't met anyone who is a Bitcoin maxi or very much interested into, uh, in Bitcoin. They are all uh, kind of distracted by the shitcoin array. Uh, so it's going to be... How I come think... it was a surprise to you? Like maybe you didn't search enough. Isn't, uh, is it difficult to find, I don't know, us, like 21 uh, like community or some maxi Twitter profiles? Is it like maybe? Maybe because my Polish is very limited. Mm -hmm. That can be one of the factors. But it's always a positive surprise. Like we are in Poland kind of arranging this maxi community, trying to get to know each other uh, from like three years. And like every here and now there is there is like another person that, hey, I live in Poland. Hey, I'm Polish. Hey, I'd never heard of you. So it slowly grows. Uh, and every such new person like you living in Poznan is a very positive surprise. Yeah, and I am very excited to meet other people in Poznan in person um, who are also into Bitcoin. That would be great. I will. Yeah, your, your audience maybe uh, think that Poland is a cold country, but, but as you can judge on on your face, my face, it's it's quite hot uh, these days. Mm -hmm. Yeah, these days I really appreciate the sun. So, Tomek, uh, tell us about yourself, about your background from the very <laughs> well, beginning, uh, your early works. Well, I don't know where to start. I like I love life, so I do various activities, and like since years they've been uh, quite often related with and in the direction of freedom i've been obsessed with this topic uh since like teenage years and uh, thus i became kind of a libertarian activist here in poland did lots of projects uh, like education wise or or happening some activism uh for freedom for educating in liberty libertarianism and and some philosophies around it um my career also re revolves around around these topics. I did some. I was working in media. I was working in um, crypto startups. Uh, we've opened a bar in Warsaw, which is called the Freedom Lounge, which uh, each of you can go and visit. It's right in the center of, of Warsaw, uh, which is also like libertarian themed. They don't accept Bitcoin, um, though, but uh, hopefully it will change soon. Mm, so yeah, I, I'm like let's say. Freelance. Tomek, we lost you for a second. Freelance, so oh. what? Uh, uh, well, to sum it up, I don't know, people like labels. Maybe it's easier to think of person. I'm like a project manager, libertarian activist, running also a NGO called Centrum Capitalismo, under which umbrella we do various activities like uh, chess tournaments, soccer tournaments, uh, philosophy seminars, uh, libertarian conferences, this bar. Now we try to focus um, saying we, I mean, me and my friends in Liberty focus on Bitcoin because uh, I find it the most efficient, effective and true tool for advancing Liberty. Mm -hmm. um, 
there are different topics that I'd like to dive into. Let's start from your teenage years. I was also interested in liberty because I come from Iran. It was a very a limited, restricted country. So it was something that you always thought about. But uh, my thoughts on liberty have evolved. And right now, I think that I know it better. And I have a more, uh, much more correct attitude and approach to it. How did your thought on liberty evolve? Were you a libertarian from the start, from when you were a teenager and you kept being so? Or did it evolve over time? First encounter with like conscious thought. I think I remember from like early primary school so when you're like eight ten years old and and on some of the lessons i remember we had to write down values we were learning what are values what we what we want in life what are some kind of hashtags though this time it wasn't called hashtags but rather like a keyword that describe you and uh, i i wrote on a sheet of paper niezależność which is independence in english I, I remember being proud of myself that I know such a difficult word as, as of being like a nine-year-old. Um, but it somehow stick with me uh, that yes, yes, I, I understood what it contains, that it's being on your own, like and doing what you want. And uh, this kind of also describes uh, my character. So when you are like get older and you like become conscious of your... Um, I don't want to say political views, but like some kind of ethics, social ethics, maybe views on an organization of a society. Uh, I figured that, uh, well, I'm constantly skeptical, skeptical towards like authority, towards mainstream media, and thus my digging into like early days of my internet or uh, or some books was always in this direction. This underground movement, not to not. Am I breaking maybe the connection? Uh, a little bit, but I it was good enough for me to follow. Okay, um, when you know under communist regime there used to be uh, underground movement of people conspiring how to uh, destroy the communists in power, uh, and I used to think being also following this time uh, following music from 80s, for example, which used to be like a rebel rock. Uh, I was like being a teenager, I was a fan of it. Also being fascinated by this 80s underground movement. Why now in Poland, we don't have such oppressive government that we could fight with. I think we have, I think maybe it's yeah. a, a bit more warm now and, and like water is warmer in our pipes, but, uh, mm -hmm. but the government is still oppressive. Mm. But then also, you know, like in school and outside of school, you get to read some Orwell. Huxley, uh, I got uh, fascinated by these anti-utopias, watching V for Vendetta, Equilibrium. So this type of culture, popular culture, me as being like, you know, sceptical. Later, I figured that, okay, this is libertarianism. What What is like growing in my head? I think maybe, maybe I'm a libertarian. I remember also there was this... Uh, documentary on Google Video, when YouTube did not accept yet long videos. There was Google Video, before even Google acquired YouTube, uh, mm -hmm. there was a documentary called Zeitgeist. It was quite, it was one of the first like viral long video, uh, the classic documentary with yellow subtitles focusing on various uh, conspiracy theories. So this stayed with me. This there was one part which described how fiat system works, how current money is based on credit and it's unsustainable that the money that we have in our hands and the money that governments constantly prints kind of doesn't not exist. Um, government's monopoly of force over you. So then it also grew in my head into this, well, I don't want to say hatred, but it put central banks uh, as my institutional enemy, which mm -hmm. later on with Bitcoin was, you know, 
more mature and realized. When did you get into Bitcoin? Um, well, as being like a, I, I was an activist in some libertarian groups and like was following some pages, blogs on the website. It was quite early on my radar as a like. Uh, surely I did not realize much. I I was supporting that it was the time when um, Ross Ulbricht got arrested. So we, we also organized some protest event mm -hmm. in Warsaw. And I think before that, I was I, I got some Bitcoins at some event. Somebody was giving paper wallets. And I tried to I like import them on my computer and and like send to my wallet. But of course, later I for I, I don't I have no idea how much was it, it and where is it, what happened with it. It was like maybe two thousand, I don't remember thirteen or fifteen. But anyway, later on I got some bitcoins to trade on dark market. I wanted to check what is this dark web and either can you actually buy a passport or some drugs or some guns. Of course, I didn't buy anything illegal, but uh, but I got to uh, like use. It was my first use of Bitcoin. Uh, some of these Bitcoins were also, of course, were lost. Sites. Mm. But then I begin to kind of understand, well, I'm still learning and I still have lots to grasp that I want to understand about Bitcoin and this ecosystem is like so large, so vast that you, it's even hard to be a an, an renaissance man within Bitcoin ecosystem. Around 2019, 20, when these strange events were rolling out in yeah. at the end of 2019, even before pandemic. I, I don't know if you remember, there was like January 2020 and like somebody died on January 1st. Then some January like second day killed in, in Iran, right? Suleimani. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it was like early 2020. Then there was like Australia. It was like January is going crazy. What's going to happen this year? Like there is this virus for, in China and like things are strange. Things are happening in the world and it kind of it brought back my attention to Bitcoin, especially when I was like in realization that I still hold today kind of sad realization that the libertarian movement, the people that I am an activist with, that we debate on conferences, that we meet sometimes online or offline, are not interested. The realization was that these people are not interested in the practical tools that give them liberty. They love to debate Menger, Rothbard, Hayek, and themselves who is more right about liberty how to build a libertarian society but I, d I didn't feel the liberty in their hearts not judging anyone but i saw that hey there is this bitcoin thing which which is a realization of libertarian dreams that for years like even as early as menger like these thinkers were trying to imagine private money and lots of us activists and libertarian thinkers were pointing out that central banking is the root cause of most of the problems of the society. And we have Bitcoin, which is a practical tool, seeing the world around how it changes when it touches Bitcoin. And libertarians are not so much interested in it. So this was the, my first initial reaction before I started before I fell into that rabbit hole, it made me like, okay, let's follow the white rabbit. Let's learn what it is. Let's why, why, where is my bitcoins actually? What happened? Like, I... story starts. Uh, each of us have like different, you know, story how we got wrecked, how we learned mm -hmm. uh, about bitcoin. So since then, I'm like, uh, invested like with my with my mindset and and with like direction that my life goes with bitcoin but also my activism um libertarian activism sh shifted toward bitcoin education towards spreading bitcoin so we we published um for we partnered on publishing four translations of um Saifedin book vijay book uh, two other books mm. We organize uh, meetups for polish maxis we have like an online chat for polish maxis so now i try to like arrange and anima animate the um, 
well, ecosystem here or like community of uh, Bitcoiners in Poland. Because when, when I tried to learn like three years ago more about Bitcoin in Polish, there was, I mean, still there is not much. But if you put, you know, Bitcoin lesson in Polish on YouTube or in Google, you will you will not find a good material. You will be directed to some crypto influencers who will mm -hmm. tell you, hey, there is another better coin which can multiply your stack 30 times, especially if you leverage or some technical analysis guys or lots of, maybe not necessarily scams, but lots of low quality content, which really did not. And uh, well, I believe uh, it is much more important phenomena on a civilizational scale than most of the people realize. And I think uh, you and your listeners already already know that. Um, why, and what do you think the barrier is that is stopping so many libertarians embrace Bitcoin? Is it that they are maybe old school or maybe they are of a kind of theoretical mindset that they just want to debate and they want to be an armchair philosopher and they kind of don't, don't care about actually seeing their dreams, their ideas come true. I think it's a mix of what you said. There is also like a path dependence of the like history of the country, of society, of movement. If we had maybe in 2008, if Poland had a financial crisis to the um, scale that Western world had, because Poland was kind of safe, green island of this financial crisis back then, maybe then more people would be interested in it. Maybe Polish libertarians focus would get the campaign from Ron Paul and the Fed. Maybe we would be forced to be interested in more in Bitcoin, but Polish libertarians or like freedom movement or people, the interest of people who are mm, in liberty, who are into liberty, was focusing on something else and then like by the butterfly effect we are not where we want to be whilst this path of dependence path in czech republic where there were like early people who built nice startups and then there was like capital and community to build around it and now they can organize the best conference uh, bitcoin conference in europe was quite different while the like the environment is not the yeah, also there is this mix of of factors that you mentioned. Like they, okay, it's not like I want to like judge people and say, hey, you made a wrong choice. But if, but conditionally, if you care about liberty, if you actually care, not just you say that you, because I think that, okay, some, the if, if libertarian is the one who acts to achieve liberty and promote it, and he wants liberty to happen in the world. If I say that I want liberty, but I don't do anything, maybe not for the world, but even for my life to 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 like expand the the scope of my possible activities. If I don't act for liberty, I'm not a libertarian. Maybe I'm a libertarian thinker. Maybe I am a libertarian a keyboard warrior in the internet. But to call yourself a libertarian, especially libertarian activist, I think you have to maybe not especially utilize necessarily, but at least get interested in these tools into, okay, how can I get more liberty in my lifetime? What are the options maybe to work remotely, which is avoid taxes, which are, which I like claim that are so oppressive onto me. How can I maybe in any sense escape this this government, you know, influence and interference in your life, it's not only about Bitcoin, it's about your approach to life. It's about whether you have this passion for freedom in your heart and you manifest it in your actions. I think this is called integrity. When mm -hmm. you have this, when things you pray are also reflected in your actions. I think this is a, well, this is a philosophical issue. Maybe there is some judgment on society and people, but I think it's a problem not only with this group that we are talking about, but it's just a general problem with people. I think people people lack integrity. And if you look mm -hmm. in general at the society, there is lots of empty talk and monkey business. Uh, and uh, luckily, Bitcoin also 
fixes it uh, well personally for for for, for us. Mm -hmm. um, you defined uh, liberty from your point of view as you were explaining this. Could you get uh, delve deeper into your definition of libertarianism? I'm interested to know that. <clears throat> Okay, so if you check like the dictionary definition of libertarian, it's a, it's something like along, along the words that I mentioned that it's a it's a person who who advocates liberty in private and social lives and wants to achieve it. There is also a more like classical liberal, paleo-libertarian, anarcho-capitalist, and they uh, try to differentiate between each other, depends on what's your stand on, I don't know, maybe death penalty or maybe maybe taxes. Uh, and people also like to argue, this is true libertarianism. No, this is true libertarianism. I think that dictionary definition is wider and it's encompassing them all because if... If we go deeper, I don't think I would call myself a libertarian because then it would be like a follower of this Mary Rothbard political philosophy, which takes a non-aggression principle as an axiom. And I don't want to call myself libertarian in this regard. I just use the wider definition for the sake of this conversation. But from my point of view, I'm not a, I'm not pro free market. I'm not pro free market i'm not a capitalist i'm not libertarian because because i'm lib um, and i want lots of freedom in my life and i don't think that government is good today government i think government can be good but i don't think it it, it is anywhere mm, good for the society because i value my life because i recognized what are the individual rights of of a human being and what are this these rights how do they manifest in a in a society in a company of other people who have same rights so first i think that no person has the right to to limit the rights of others to limit their if their pursuit of happiness their right to life and the right to pro property so these rights are non non they don't go you don't have right to inflict to to limit rights of another human being so from the individual perspective i'm a libertarian because i consider i i recognize what is good and what is bad in a social context i rec i just don't want any institution i don't want any individual to when even if it's written somewhere in the constitution to take away rights basic human rights of life liberty and property mm, away from them mm, but also from my personal level even if even if i would be like on a uh, on an island in the ocean on a forgotten island i i would still like consider myself like a liber okay precisely objectivist let's say like follower of philosophy of Ayn Rand I think that's the one that I like align myself the most with and I agree with uh, what she said I don't know if you're familiar with Ayn Rand but coming back yeah being on an island I would also value freedom I wouldn't like to be limited by you know, lack of food weather of course I would be but the maximization of possible act actions I can perform without limiting rights of other people is freedom to me because it gives the most the it gives the widest spectrum of scenarios of the future for myself from which I can choose so this 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 is this is freedom for me this is liberty for me I can I can be a master of my life I can I can have my decisions based on my recognition on what is true, what is not true, what is good, what is not good, what is good for me. Mm. And like political philosophy, being pro-free market, being like libertarian in a definition, in the like Rothbardian definition mm, is a cherry 
on a top of my life philosophy. Yeah, mm. politics, I'm interested in politics, but only for it not to be interested in me anymore. It's not like okay. I want like to play with play around with news. Who is in not politics is unfortunately interested in me. So as my rebuttal, as my response to that, I'm interested in it, but only as long as I mean only unless only when it will stop when the politics will stop being interested in me. Mm -hmm. And uh we have something like uh, 10 minutes left in this room if you can answer this mm, in a brief amount of um, duration of time or but maybe uh, we can actually extend it uh, i just want it to be in one chunk as um, as possible um you said that you are not against the government so there are forms of government or you can think of rights for the government that you, there are um, kind of capabilities and rights that you can imagine for a gov government. What is your uh, ideal form of government? What features does it have? Well, I think that for people, it's much better to live. They can flourish, they can, they can, explore these scenarios of the future and they can make choices, they can live peacefully when their need of security is satisfied. Mm. So once the society organizes themselves, I think every rational society will eventually come to terms that, okay, guys, we need to set up some rules maybe, like because like if there is anarchy, like who will who will you know do revenges who will resolve conflicts who will we need law whether it's i don't know christian law maybe it's a rothbardian law maybe it's the, i think it's still better to have some absolute decision on what is considered as legal action within a society than without it of course, people should have an option to choose another organize another society, maybe if they don't like the law for this one. So the institution that takes care of this law, we call a government. Of today governments, yeah, they have guns, they are oppressive, they collect taxes. Maybe we will need another word in a dictionary to describe ideal government. But yes, I think there is something as a good government and it, it is only the ideal government, the one that protects the rights of its citizens, the one that protects, how can you protect rights? Well, by establishing the law and by enforcing the rational law, also this okay. law, I mean, if we go deeper philosophically, it has to be based on some philosophy, it has to be based on some ethics. But once we have this established, and I think it's not difficult, having all the knowledge as humanity we have today, even like Americans, they did, they have a quite a good shot on it, on describing the, with the, their first um, declaration of independence, mm -hmm. with describing what is, what is uh, proper, what is not proper in a social context and what the government should do. So I think, yes, the, or this organization of the society, which we call government, should be protecting the rights of its citizens and should be protecting them from I don't know, any burglar, murderer, any institution which tries to, well, <clears throat> revoke their rights, kill them, steal from them, with other governments, other countries, the criminals within within it. So government should take care of this by, by having a police, by having an army, by having some judiciary system. But I don't think that this government should force people to pay for itself. I think to this government... There's such a small government, such, and I don't want, well, we can go to how rich would the society with such government could be and what it could fund, but definitely, well, even if it's, it would, wouldn't be possible to establish, to fund such government with voluntary donations or with some other ways 
of income we can imagine, I then I think that the, such society, which is not able to fund this government, I think it doesn't deserve ideal government. But the rational society of people who love freedom, who want to organize themselves into some form of institution which protects their rights to make their lives great and possible and safe, is is a government minimal government of voluntary taxation, voluntary funded by voluntary donations. Yes, because taxations even as good as you can imagine government could be once it takes taxes from citizens, obligatory taxes. It's already made step too much, and it's not ideal a government because it 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 uh, well it limited your rights. Mm -hmm. It stole from you. And now uh, the other question. Um, I mean, it is not surprising to me, uh, but how um how do you think, or better to formulate it this way, because the answer to this question I have in mind now is more mm -hmm. unclear. Why did you from libertarianism moved into focusing on Bitcoin, on um, educating people on Bitcoin? And you thought that these two are so much in line with each other uh, that focusing on Bitcoin can help you realize your libertarian dream, if you, if you like me put it this way. Uh, why do you think uh, why mot motivates you to focus on Bitcoin as a libertarian, simply put? Well, n now I think I have different motivations, but at first I was uh, like disappointed with all the other techniques, with all the other activism we did. Like I realized it's not like I, I, I had a delusion that we will change society, that that we will eventually buy a, a, whatever, reading Rothbard on streets and like giving his pamphlets or doing some YouTube channels, that we will make people vote for libertarians in politics and in the next elections, uh, libertarians will win, the libertarian party will win it and we will have freedom in our country. No way. It's not going to happen. We... It's, I think, the common school of activism among like world libertarians because there is like some networks like Students for Liberty, Young Americans for Liberty, Atlas Network, Foundation for Economic Education. They're like large NGOs which have like friends and activists around the world and they try to communicate some messages. They follow the Hayek school, Hayek's theory of social change, which advocates that. In order to change society, the most efficient way is to target thought leaders, is to mm -hmm. not go through politics, not also go through the masses, but target academics, businessmen, some leaders of opinion, and because they formulate what they 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 basically take the ideas from philosophers or make mix them, make their own, and then they advocate it for the masses. Then they implement them, them in the world. So if you are as an activist, you think about being efficient, most probably you, you should either build a network of people in liberty who are creators, uh, uh, journalists, politicians on various fields, and then influence the world. It's, and I agree, it's probably in the old world before Bitcoin, that's probably the most efficient way, but it also doesn't work. The hopes that by, I mean, okay, I, I appreciate that there is so many various activism ways of doing activism. Some people publish books, some people go into schools and teach economics, some people do movies. Yes, that's how we should do social change when everybody does what suits him best, when every activist is satisfied with what they do if he someone is do, good in do, doing comics let him do comics uh, yes i appreciate that mm. but i also think that the hope that by doing probably anything like this today mm, will bring effects is i don't know 
effects okay you can measure effect by lowering your uh, income tax by one percent and maybe that's a libertarian success for some libertarian success is having libertarian utopia here and now or at least let's move to switzerland but hoping that some social change will bring effects by any activism that we did so far and i did so many things like bars soccer tournaments chess sports like some uh, mountain journeys uh, schools translating books none of it probably will work if it works if it changes society somehow the effects of it will be in we will we could see them maybe in 30 40 years especially in developed societies and the chance that it would happen is maybe 10 20 percent in the meantime some pandemic could happen some financial crisis could happen some maybe leader emerges whether fascist leader or libertarian leader like in uh, argentina currently that it has much more influence appearance of tiktoks of ubers airbnbs and now bitcoin has so much greater influence of society that none of the activities that I did for the last 10 years even even matter. Uh, okay, maybe not to be that much skeptical. Yes, appreciate. I think it is needed. But so I, I think I kind of lost hope. I started doing activism for my own joy and pleasure, being around people who love freedom and playing libertarian soccer with them. I like I don't think I would change the world. I don't need to change the world, but I need what I need to change and what each of us needs to change if we want some change is the world around them and it has to start with themselves what's the easiest that's a separate thing what's the easiest what if you care about this freedom what's probably the most cutting through vector to achieving liberty in your life how to be more free tell me momo how do you think how how a person any person could be could exp and their, as I define freedom, their scope of possible actions and free decisions to make between them. How? Well, by moving to the United States? By, I don't know, tell me. What's, mm -hmm. what, what do you think? For me, moving out of Iran was part of the move. And I think maybe that is also going to be your answer because I see some foreshadowing of that in your previous responses is that actually mm, gaining independence from the state's money, the financial control of the state, is the key. And I have a pet theory, a kind of hypothesis, that in the past governments were overthrown. But now we do not see governments being overthrown that much. They are just replaced by some leaders were standing uh, one before and the people who are oppressing people stay in power no matter what and i think that is because of their control over money and if we fix the money and we uh, kind of secularize the money from the state that's what can modify the state and reform the state and take its fangs out Moving out of a country that is oppressive, that can work in short term. But in the long term, fixing the money is going to be the answer. And that's personally for me one of the reasons I am interested in Bitcoin. I think you maybe took a little shortcut uh, with that, with fixing money. Because, well, on a personal level, how can I fix the money today? Or um, also, it doesn't necessarily mean that if somebody wants to be more free, that he switches to Bitcoin standard and refuses to participate in a, a government money system. How, how, how today, how, 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 how it would change his freedom now? It's difficult to explain for a person who is not into it yet. Mm -hmm. I think that on a, if you want more freedom for yourself, uh -huh. the, it's not ideological answer. It's just a practical answer. The most uh -huh. freedom will give you money. Even fiat mm -hmm. money. It just mm -hmm. if you have like just make money. If you're like if sure. you want more freedom, just make money. It's more efficient way than to read books about Rothbard, vote for libertarians, mm -hmm. and hope that everybody else does. 
and that they will not corrupt themselves participating in the system and, and they will bring a libertarian utopia finally to Europe. But we can have tools to have this libertarian utopia now. Mm -hmm. So well, yes, if you want the freedom for yeah. others, if, if we are talking, if you are not a, just a like libertarian thinker or a libertarian sympathizer, but if you are a libertarian activist and you want this freedom for the people around you, at least your close ones, or uh, then 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 I think there is no second best in strategy than Bitcoin strategy for advocating that, for like seeing the seeing economic mechanisms change, seeing uh, people's motivations, incentives in the economic structure, seeing how governments cannot mm -hmm. interfere that much in this in, in this monetary network. Uh, th this is just cutting through the world of of like possible liberty worlds for us. Like the, the politics, today politics, especially like in Poland, is probably irrelevant. If it is relevant for you, then, then the first thing you need to do is to make money. Then you have at least some... And, security in terms of 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 just life then you have mm -hmm. some freedom once you okay. probably have this money you I think and feel safe of taking care of the world am i breaking my connection sorry no 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 uh, i mean uh, there was a very short part but i got you totally i just wanted to say that now i get your question uh, better on a personal level and a practical way and also a short term way you are uh, focusing on uh well moving is one way and the other one is you the use of technology in general you mentioned some of them for example uber yeah. tiktok uh, instagram these have been really freedom tools in my own country when the number of the uprisings the number of the protests have increased immensely after the emergence of these tools and the government have uh, cracked down on them so yeah the internet social media had like a is a great freedom of speech tool even yeah. though like we can we can we can like argue that some platforms are like actual censors and they limit your freedom of speech but uh, as you said like in in iran it's a, a great use case without this tool like no other ngo in the history mm -hmm. of iran did probably so much for exactly. securing even if it did the effects of it the consequence the cause is so indirect that you can only speculate that yeah. yes, because we had Adam Smith Institute in Great Britain, now London is a center of financial world. The technology has much more influence uh, than than like idea activists today. Yes, ideas drive the world. Yeah, but super slowly. Yeah. So I think we have to take like a you know like we if you. If somebody cares about the world and wants to see some change, we need to have these two in mind. Like the, I think that the root cause, okay, I, I think at the root, the problem with society is not even the government's control of money because this is an effect of the ideas that people have. This is the effect of the mindset of culture, of philosophy, that people give permit. It's totally not my world. I'm not a part of this mindset or culture of philosophy but and not and more and more people hopefully are not but the general populace they just accept this fact mm -hmm. that yes uh, oh yeah there there can be this this mafia government that they build us schools and they can print money to finance these schools and to finance their all the fucking wars and all the wrong things that the governments are doing it's the the root cause is i think yeah philosophical a pandemic then, of compliance, kind of? Sorry? A pandemic of compliance, probably. That's the root, root problem, that most people are just complying, that they give consent to whatever the government is doing. Is that what you mean? No, I mean I mean that the philosophy held by people. Mm -hmm. that, like, we, we can see different approaches to the mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. world and society in today's China and in today's United States. Uh -huh. And it, it's also, we can see the effect of it in yeah. the, how these people live, how free they are, what type of institutions emerged. But this process is super slow. If we want to see the uh, like 
more freer future, like in say year 2100, yes, we can try to propagate these ideas because if only we, through culture, probably the most effective is culture and pop culture, but, but by changing the di dictator who will um, maybe legalize Bitcoin, I don't think this will change the country because especially like in Poland, people will outvote him and they will vote another one who will give them <laughs> welfare. So it's a problem with people. That's what I'm getting to. Like this is a, this is the root cause, but it's the the effects of it are so you you don't have KPIs of measuring that. You know, like the the causes are so indirect that yes, we need to take that in mind and try to influence. First and and uh, uh, educating people through popular culture, or maybe writing a book which encompasses that ideas, like some of the people did, like Robert Heinlein or Ayn Rand, who also thought in a similar way that yeah, we need to influence the society, and for her, the most effective way was to writing a fiction book, which yes, eventually kind of kind of raises a generation of Americans, of American libertarians who value freedom. Maybe maybe also Satoshi Nakamoto wrote, probably he he read some of the writings of, of you know, Hayek, uh, Ayn Rand so. or, or, or Bastiat. Yes, he had to. So without them, we wouldn't have Satoshi and Bitcoin. But having yeah. all those, having this, this, so many proofs that free market capitalism and that the states which with the least government interference, the societies in them flourish much more and people feel better there. There is so much proof of that. There is so much background economic and philosophical theory of the likes we mentioned. And there is so much technology that we can spread the message instantly, you know, to billions of people, not only now message, but also send money. The technology of in, like changing the world is there. We kind of, Maybe not know how to do it, but there is an such an inertia that I think within this inertia, the most efficient strategy is Bitcoin. You don't have to write another Atlas Shrugged be because then like the effects of this Atlas Shrugged will appear maybe you know in 10, 20 years, uh, while effects of Bitcoin are appearing now and on a much larger scale. Like I trying various things and exploring what type of activism or even entrepreneurship, because this is actually the activism, happens around the world. I haven't seen one that is close enough to Bitcoin in terms of like bringing this value of independence to to your life, right? It's not only like to like it's on the all the levels of your life, of life of your close ones, and of the world, right? Uh, you mentioned that. I want to be respectful of your time, so I will limit the number of questions that are coming no to my mind. Um, you you mentioned that there were some other methods, some other ways that you were following to propagate freedom and libertarianism, and you found them ineffective. Uh, do you see, um, do you perceive Bitcoin has been effective in this regard? Um, since you have started your activism in Bitcoin and in propagating Bitcoin, have you sensed a change? And can you say that now I am more successful compared to the um, to the past, and I am actually getting closer to my goals? Okay, to correct myself, I it's not like I find those methods ineffective with zero effectiveness. I think those things are important. And I also still do, like we played in this soccer team, which is less fair United. We have some stupid, you can say, stickers, which, you know, bring some libertarian idea and they appear on the streets of Warsaw, which we like put out with friends. There are some like film festivals. And I know that these activities, which will maybe not privatize the, the companies in Poland, maybe they will not lower your taxes. Maybe maybe, maybe the effect of it, yes, is maybe there is no effect. Maybe, 
you, you can only guess and speculate if there is, but I'm also sure that any that there wouldn't be social change if we would go with one vector. There were like the yeah. generation, the next generation or or next iteration of 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 society, uh like it it wouldn't go in such direction without the stickers, without football teams, without some culture, without some memes, stories, even silly Facebook groups. So I'm glad it happens. I'm glad it mm -hmm. exists, and I still go with this, this activism on 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 wide scope. But 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 just Bitcoin is super much more effective, and we we, we can. Talk about like the ways how yes, Bitcoin brings financial independence and brings some stories of people from third world countries which they escaped with Bitcoin and government doesn't know, etc. There are like plenty of them. I, I'm not necessarily might be exa an example, but the simple observation, looking at people and their interest in their ideas and their sympathies to certain philosophies are certain the bitcoiners are getting libertarianized pretty quickly like once you get into this bitcoin rabbit hole okay you you read white paper you get into podcasts you learn some technical stuff you eventually people get interested into like some okay what's what about the rest this is money but how maybe actually societies should function like who was this uh, menger uh, why hike was writing about the national whatever but the interest in and sympathy to ideas of liberty for sure comes for every bitcoiner i've seen mm -hmm. more bitcoiners getting libertarianized yeah. than unfortunately i've seen libertarians yeah. getting bitcoinized and i've been to you know mm. various groups and conferences so for me this is a direct proof awesome. that that no other activities we did i don't know some tv streams of some elections or or some conference when we tried to debate socialists they did not bring such a rate of conversion as just getting interested in bitcoin brings Exactly, exactly. That has been definitely true for me myself. Uh, I was so much on the left and Bitcoin really changed me. Did you lose me for a second? Uh, yes, but I got you. Oh, okay. Yeah. I was just saying that I was so much on the left, but Bitcoin really changed me. Capitalism was a dirty word for me. And now I, I am, I am uh, pretty much an anarcho-capitalist. Um, and that change happened through Bitcoin. Yeah, so I can really see where you are going with that. Um, let's talk about one uh, more thing, or let's cheat. And could you explain about the project that you are working on in more depth? For example, what happens in the... Um, launch the freedom launch yeah and uh, that you have in uh, warsaw and also in the bitcoin F uh, film fest uh, one of whose uh, teasers we saw at the bitcoin conference i really enjoyed it um so uh, please and we can of uh, capitalism and center for capitalism uh, mm -hmm. let us um, know more about these and how people can follow this okay <clears throat> well uh, being this libertarian activist i i got lots of different fascinations and ways of trying let's do this type of conference let's maybe try a soccer tournament some of these ideas some of these projects stay with us and we continue doing them some were shorter uh one of them was, uh, and it still exists, um, it's a Freedom Lounge. It's a bar in the center of Warsaw. Um, it's called Świetlica Wolności in Polish. It's in a very popular place next to a palm. So there is this artificial palm. Oh, yeah, I know Warsaw. that place. <laughs> so we feel like uh, maybe we look at it and it feels a bit warmer. It doesn't have to. It's already <laughs> hot. Uh, but uh, there is there is this Freedom Lounge bar, which uh, I opened together with uh, Warsaw Enterprise Institute. I don't um, I don't work with it anymore, but uh, like I certainly visit it uh, often, and it's a must-go place for 
for any people who love freedom because uh, there is you lots mean of Easter eggs. People, uh huh, and people and people have discussions there. Yes, so uh, there there is a underground, there is a like a base, like an underground level with stage. So there is sometimes like stand ups happening or some concerts. And if there is some like uh, libertarian events, it's very often in Warsaw organized there. So if there is any like free market roadshow happens there, after party, after Bitcoin Film Fest or weekend of capitalism happen there as well. So uh, Freedom Lounge, you can check it. It's in Warsaw Street, Nowy Świat. Uh, so if any of your listeners actually is in Poland or in Warsaw, uh, well, you can hit me up. I know everybody. So if you need any meeting with some Bitcoiner or another anarcho-capitalist, uh, you can find me on Twitter. It's Tomek K. And message me. Um, another project which I mentioned was with this Weekend of Capitalism, um, which is, uh, well, we organized already five editions of the biggest, uh, like a libertarian conference in Poland. So it's, this is like the freedom, the capitalist conference where all of the NGOs uh, or groups or startups, which are like explicit a pro radical liberty, not just some American liberalism, but we really want minimal state and we consider taxation as theft um, gather there gather there and uh, they exchange you know there is of course expo booth when they show some flash talks some debates some uh, concerts so it's, this is like a two three days festival for a capitalists movement in poland um, it happened it happens every two years it was last year it, this year was in march so expect another weekend of capital Capitalism uh, in 2025, mm -hmm. and this year weekend of capitalism was accompanied by the Bitcoin Film Fest, which I also mentioned. I find like Bitcoin uh, quite efficient strategy and effective strategy for libertarians, but also philosophy wise and spreading of ideas. I think popular culture is the way to go. Thus, we created this Bitcoin Film Fest with uh, Pierre Corbin and with uh, my friends. Mm. It was next to be weekend of capitalism. So, so when we had like four hundred people at this Polish libertarian conference um, in the center of Warsaw, next to it in a palace of culture. So there is this iconic building in Warsaw. We held right before the conference and right after the conference. We had two days of Bitcoin Film Fest where we screened uh, well movies which we consider Bitcoin movies. Um, they are mostly documentaries now. We screened eight movies. Four of them were um, represented by their directors. We gave an award to the best movie, The Mystery of Satoshi from France. And we plan to continue with it, doing Bitcoin Film Fest, an annual film festival in Warsaw, which is going to be going to be a heart of, well, nascent, but future uh, Bitcoin Hollywood, let's say, Bitcoin film industry, whatever Bitcoin films, whatever Bitcoin cinema, um, with our Film Fest team, we try to put our hand on. So we are building now the network of Bitcoin filmmakers. Uh, we'll be visiting some Bitcoin conferences, like we've been to BTC Prague, um, and also yeah. all of this in waiting for upcoming Bitcoin movies. And we expect uh, six or seven of them to be released uh, this year. So um, expect more from, well, not especially from us, but from the Bitcoin cinema world because it's quite growing. Uh, so if you want to know more, you can visit the bitcoinfilmfest.com. You can leave uh, to inform what's happening in the Bitcoin cinema. So that's, Thank you that, so that, that's the new project and... Uh, as most of my projects, even if the hope for change it brings is quite small, uh, I do them because I enjoy them. In, it's not 100% sure that because of Bitcoin Film Fest, we're going to live in a hyper Bitcoinized world. But I think the hyper Bitcoinized world wouldn't happen without these cultural phenomena as film festivals as well. And also, if, if the hyper-Bitcoinization wouldn't happen, I still love doing Bitcoin Film Fest, meeting people like you and my friends uh, who co-organized it. So if you if you guys love cinema, if you like movies, and if you like Bitcoin, and I expect you are if you listen to Momo's podcast, uh, then check BitcoinFilmFest.com. Yeah, definitely. I will include the links to all of them. And it's... 
great encouragement for me to also um up my game in learning polish and in one of oh, your yeah. next you yeah, could you live in poland for how polish. long I've been here for five years, but my level of Polish is very embarrassing. Don't ask so me whoever about whoever else is in Polish and listens to us, and uh, you know you can check also in the Telegram group, Telegram.com/slash dwadzieścia mm jeden, -hmm. which is which comes it is twenty one in written in Polish, which is which is our Bitcoin Maxi community group. So I don't know if you joined, but if you I did, not, uh, you did so. It's, much more Polish good Bitcoin contact except for these groups and links provided there. Uh, so yeah, welcome to 21 and maybe some of your listeners also would join us. This is our Polish Bitcoin community. It's been a much greater encouragement for me to uh, improve my Polish than the dream of getting a citizenship here. Thank you for <laughs> you see, all your activity. You again, Bitcoin fixes this and in more efficient way than five yeah. years of different uh, trials this is the motivator glad to see that yeah 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 i hadn't uh, looked at it this way so bitcoin is fixing my polish <laughs> nice thank you very much domek thanks for your thank time you. thank you brother